back with you once again, and there's no doubt that by now uh, I would think that most of you have seen uh, the shocking footage of the now infamous bus bullying incident, uh, the incident where a bunch of juvenile delinquents were just cruelly tormenting and bullying this uh, older lady who was working as a bus monitor on a school bus. And certainly in seeing that video, I think it was shocking to practically everybody that saw it. It was amazing, and, and you just couldn't hardly believe what you were seeing and couldn't hardly believe what you were hearing. And most people, when they reacted to it, certainly reacted with a lot of sympathy towards the lady, and understandably so. Uh, certainly reacted with, with a tremendous degree of shock that you would hear kids speaking in that tone and speaking in that way and uh, acting in that way just in such a cruel manner. And again, totally understandable. And really, most people have focused on the bullying aspect of, uh, of this and how wrong that was. And, and again, all that's understandable. I'm not quarreling with it. But I think with this incident, there's one more aspect of it that no one's really talked about yet. There, there's actually a much bigger issue that this brings up that, that might not be readily apparent. I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm, I'm going to, first of all, put you in a situation. I'm going to put you in the position of those kids. And I want you to think through something real quick. Think back to when you were a child. Not today, but back when you were a child. However many years ago that, that was. I'm in my late 30s, so let's say, for me, 25, maybe 30 years ago. Think back to that time. Would you have dared to speak to any adult or any authority figure in that manner that those juvenile delinquents spoke to that bus monitor? No, you never would have done it. Now... It should be obvious that we would never have done that, but think a little bit further. Why would we not have acted that way towards a, an adult or an authority figure in that way? Was it because we were much, much nicer kids and we were incapable of bullying? No, certainly not. We were kids like everybody else, and believe me, we could be just as cruel as any other generation of kids were. I mean, we could bully, we could do all those things. We were no different than any other generation of kids that ever grew up, so there's nothing unique about that. But there's a real kind of blunt and simple reason why we never would have even thought to do something like this. Because quite frankly, if I can be blunt, if we would have tried something like that when we were kids, we would have had the hell smacked out of us. I mean, there's no two ways about it. It would not have been accepted. It would not have been allowed. And even if the adult in charge or the authority figure wouldn't have physically smacked us, you better believe that they would have really messed our world up in some very profound way. I mean, I'm talking suspension, expulsion, horrific chores, whatever, you name it. Point is, the adult would have asserted their authority swiftly, quickly, and without any doubt. And we knew that. We knew that. We were understanding that that's why you didn't see us do crap like that. You know, back in our day, a bus monitor, a bus driver, a teacher, administrator, parent, any other adult in a position of authority would have instantly put us in our place. And nobody would have been worried about lawsuits or contacting the media or, or well, you didn't do everything just so. Everybody, all the adults in society understood that disciplining children who fell out of line was appropriate. It's how you brought it up. It, it wasn't controversial. But when you think about it, the kids in that video, the only reason those kids bullied that monitor and talked to her the way they did in such an unacceptable manner, the only reason was because they knew they could get away with it. They knew that that monitor had little, if any, authority to stop them. They knew that most likely nothing negative would happen to them because of it. Of course, I said in figure that if one of the idiots videotaped it, it'd go viral. They didn't think it through at that point, but nevertheless, they, they thought they could get away with it. And like any other human being, you'll always do as much as you think you can get away with. It was almost like back when we'd have a substitute teacher back in our day. And not that we'd go to that point, but you always would get away with a little bit more with a substitute teacher because you knew they didn't have the authority your regular teacher had. You see, that's really the root problem here. Because modern children and modern young people have been raised without the fear slash respect of adults and authority figures having been imprinted to them like we were, because they've been raised without that, 
It should be no surprise that these kids and other kids you hear about from time to time are so disrespectful, so cruel, so violent, so uh, destructive towards adults and authority figures. We've stopped teaching morality in this country. We've stopped teaching right and wrong to kids. And instead, we teach some kind of bizarre moral relativism. We teach them that they are the center of their universe. We, we kowtow to them. And, and we are so worried about their self-esteem when we don't dare ever ever correct kids for any reason anymore. Well, is it a wonder at all that they turn out like this? I mean, if you go back the last 50 or 60 years in history, and you can trace a lot of this back to, to a guy named Dr. Spock. No, 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 not the guy from Star Trek with the weird ears. Not him. The other Dr. Spock, Dr. Benjamin Spock. A quack, okay, a doctor, uh, whose methods of child rearing really took off in the 50s and 60s and really became kind of the guidebook uh, that a lot of parents in post-war America used to raise their children. And Dr. Spock was real big on permissiveness and instant gratification and coddling the kids and and, and really, you know, just, just not really having walls of authority around them, but just kind of being alongside of them and just sort of guiding them in the background. Well, that type of idea really bled over into the educational establishment and into the way that we all deal with our children and we all teach our children for the last 50 or 60 or even 70 years. And you see it in all areas where there are kids. I mean, I have an education degree myself, and I remember back in the mid-90s sitting in a classroom and, and hearing all this stuff about inclusiveness and, and guiding the children but not being authoritative over them and thinking, this will never work. If someone would have tried this back when I was in school, I'd have had a field day with them. It's that obvious, or it should be that obvious. But nevertheless, for several generations now, We've abandoned real discipline of kids. We've abandoned an authoritative figure over kids. We've abandoned any type of structure of, of a hierarchy of who's on the top and who's on the bottom. We've abandoned all of that in favor of kind of a touchy-feely, mushy type of thing where, oh, we'll give you a timeout if you misbehave. Or some other toothless mechanism that really does no good. You know, it used to be years ago that children were seen and not heard. Now, I know that's kind of a quaint phrase. Didn't really sound all that good, I suppose. But really, there was something to it. There was an overall mentality that we taught our kids that, that you earned your way in life towards a point where you could be heard and where you could uh, earn respect. And you didn't make decisions until you were ready to do so. That... You weren't just given authority just because you existed. You weren't just given what you wanted just because you existed. You were not the center of your universe, but instead that you earned all of those things. That you weren't given self-esteem just for showing up and breathing, but you earned self-esteem by what you did. But yet, since the 1950s and 60s, we've raised multiple generations of young people who believe that they are entitled to do what they want, when they want, and how they want. There's no repercussions. And if something goes wrong, mom and dad always have their back. They get a bad grade in school, mom and dad will go fight for that grade for them. They get in trouble in school, mom and dad will go right down there and talk to that principal and tell them how wrong he was for punishing their kid. Jeez, I remember back when I was a kid, I was told, you know, son, if you get a whooping at school, you're going to get a whooping at home. Guess what? I behaved at school. I learned. What a novel concept. And if you don't think it has any effect on these kids as they've grown up, Go talk to anybody who works in a human resources department anywhere in America today. I mean, they will tell you horror stories of dealing with a lot of these 20-somethings that are out in the workforce now. I mean, there's all kinds of literature out there on it that HR departments go through and deal with because it's such a challenging group of people to work with. You know, you can't give them orders anymore. You, you can't expect them to, to come and do a good job out of the duty of earning a paycheck. Oh, no. You, you, you've got to kowtow to them and you've got to ask what they want to do in certain situations and, and you've got to convince them that what you want them to do was actually their idea to begin with and so they're following their own lead when really they're not. You have to do all these stupid little activities and fun things like their workplace is still junior high school because I guess they never matured beyond that point. And think about Occupy Wall Street. We see all these kids out there pooping on police cars and demanding you know, significant amounts of money and health insurance and whatever else simply because they graduated college. No, not because they earned it, but just because, well, I graduated college, I'm entitled to it. And even think about those kids last 2008 
who were so caught up in the appeal of Barack Obama. Kids who could hear a dangerous ideologue come out and talk about, well, we need health insurance for everybody, or I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to do that for you, and completely ignore how dangerous this guy is just because he told them he would give them what they wanted. Not that he's actually done that, but the fact that he could succeed with that type of rhetoric in a campaign, he could succeed that well with the young people, that should scare you. Maybe it's too late for modern youngsters. I don't know. I mean, you, you see a video like that on the bus, and it's hard to, hard to think there's any hope for kids like that. But we as a society, parents, teachers, clergy, adults in general, there's plenty of blame to go around on this. It's not any one group of people. All of us who are adults, we have to band together, and we have to start doing a much better job, and we have to revert to properly bringing up our younger generations the way we used to, to properly teaching them authority, respect for authority, respect and adherence to traditional American values, and yes, that includes Judeo-Christian moral and religious values, by the way. Have you ever noticed that once we got those out of the schools, all hell broke loose? Is it shocking to you, really? I mean, how can you educate people in a totally in an environment that's totally free from morality and then be shocked when they grow up to be immoral people. Duh! You know, for thousands of years of human history, parents passed down to future generations over thousands of years what worked and didn't work with raising children. I mean, you know, a lot of trial and error over hundreds of generations. And they pass that down, and then the information got a little, a little better with each generation. The ideas got a little bit better, and we built on, we built on what previous generations had done in raising kids, until the 1950s when Dr. Spock came along and said, "All right, that stuff you've learned over the last several thousands of years from previous generations about raising kids, throw it out. Here's really what you do." We threw all that out for some quack with a bunch of letters after his name. And now you see what's happened. You have kids who are not like the kids we grew up with, who are dangerous and cruel. You've got young adults, using that term loosely, who can barely function in society and don't have the moral foundation to make a rational decision about anything and think they're entitled to whatever they want whenever they want it. You want to know why our country's going to hell in a handbasket? That's an awful lot of the reason for it. What we've got to do is we've got to start reteaching children with future generations that you parcel out respect and decision making as kids show they are ready to take those tasks on. They're not entitled to it. They're not entitled to doing what they want to do. We as adults have to reassert control over our children. Because we've let the kids be in control for too long, and you see where it's gotten us. One of the biggest problems in society is that we, we treat our adults as though they're children, and we treat our children as though they're adults. we got to get that back turned around the right way before it's too late. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.